to see if the foul fish uh, actually eats up taste. One third of the cost, so I'm really curious how good this is. <laughs> Pow Pow Fish is a fantastic book, by the way. If you give them the right flow and right l this morning, we're going to try to catch the Aptasia eating foul fish who's in that corner right now. The reason we're doing that is because I saw him picking at Zoas. Uh, literally picking at Zoas, not around Zoas. So that's a big no-no for me, so it's coming out of the tank. And besides, I do still see some larger Aptasia, so I'm not 100% sure that uh, he's doing his job properly. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and rehome this guy. Hopefully, it's not too tough to catch. I'm taking a picture so I can post it up on the local reforms to see if anybody wants him. For now, he's gonna stay in the refugium, which actually has quite a few aptasias in here as well. So uh, we'll see. This is a test to see if he actually cleans up all the aptasias and we'll go from there. Most likely I'm gonna rehome him locally. Uh, there's always people looking for fish locally around this area. This refugium actually have quite a few aptasias. Uh, look at that guy right there. So that would be a good test to see if this fish, uh, number one, actually eats uh, aptasia. So this would be a good test to see if the foul fish uh, actually eats aptasia, which I think he does, which I think he does. But the problem is he may be picking at other corals as well and causing some issues. So um, that's why we're rehoming him. One week later. Today we are treating the mangrove plant. This mangrove plant has been with me for about a year at this point, and it has been growing pretty decent under the Z-Light UFO. But then the Z-Light UFO has always been a reef light. It's not really plant specific light. Regardless, the mangrove plants, as you can see it has been grown fantastically under the light but I also feel that the mangrove plants has really outgrew the uh, UFO light because the cone of the light is right here and this part of the plant is always in the shade so I feel like I can do better especially since this plant has been with me for a year we need to treat them better so as an alternative I pick up this light right here. This is actually pretty cheap. It's like 60 bucks or something like that on Amazon. It's really similar to the spider farmer one I have downstairs for the plant, but this is like one third of the cost. So I'm really curious how good this is. I mean, the mangrove has not been super demanding, uh, seeing how it's uh, thriving off a little bulb of a uh, UFO light. So I feel like this is gonna be upgrade regardless of how well it does. But my biggest worry is that we got a light panel here. I need to figure some way to mount the light on there because I got, I got all these cables going on. Mm -hmm. Later. Holy smoke guys, it's like I invited the sun into the little room right here. This is at, oh my god, this is at 100%, it's dimmable for 60 bucks, it's really good. This is the Radeon, usually my UFO light, it's, it's a little bit dimmer than the Radeon, but this guy just kind of blew both of them out of the water. Uh, so I put it on a timer, turn it to like a, with a smart plug, I'm just dial it back a little bit, I don't want to, I don't want to burn the mangrove. I think this is probably a good amount to start off. I have a par meter, but it's more skewered towards blue, so it may not be 100% accurate, but I can measure that in a little bit. One thing to keep in mind of, if I know plants, which I try to learn more about them, is that the brighter the light, the more nutrient uptake they'll, they'll get from the soil or the water in order to sustain that growth. So I wanna hit like a nice little balance just so that the mangrove is not gonna pull too much out from the water column away from the uh, macroalgae and the soft corals. Oh, look at this hermit crab just laying on his back chilling. And again, I got this on a smart plug, so we're gonna put this on a timer. Probably gonna turn the light on when nobody's in this room because this junk is bright. Right? Right. Yeah, I probably have this light on when nobody's in this room. So that probably means like really, really early in the morning or late at night. Oh, by the way, you may be wondering why is this slanted? Because I want to get more light into this portion of the of the tank before it's going straight down. So I feel like this portion is in the dark and there's some wasted light on this side. So angle it a little bit, not, looks like a mistake, not the best look, but uh, we'll fix that later on. All right, with the new mini sun installed, I'm gonna give you guys a really quick rundown on what's been going on with this uh, mangrove macro algae tank. It's been fantastic. Uh, look at this foul fish. Morning feeding, dude is hungry. He's going after all the uh, flake food pellets. And the band guy is uh, slowly turning on to flake food as well as pellets. Uh, for the most part, I do feed them um, frozen mices. That That is kind of the stables. Uh, but hopefully with the Filefish in here, they'll feel a little bit more urgency in terms of eating prepared food because if they don't 
snatch them up quickly, the file fish is gonna polish them off because it seems like the, the file fish is really comfortable eating prepared food uh, from the 135 because we got the whole school of fish that's just kind of tearing up with the prepared food. So if the file fish does not move quick, he knows that he's not gonna get any of them. That's why you, you see him like kind of just like rolling in and just polishing off all the food. And it seems like the band guys are sensing that because they are definitely a little bit more aggressive in terms of like going after the uh, prepare food today now that the foul fish is in the tank. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's almost like the foul fish are forcing the band guys to really uh, take on the prepare food. Look at the soft coral gorgonians and macro algae setup right here though. This is this is different type of beauty. It does not have the color pop as a, I guess a regular reef tank, but this is something else. This is definitely something else. It's a different vibe. Oh yeah, guys, look at this, much nicer. And um, Mango Plant has been with us for more than a year at this point, and she really deserves something a little bit more powerful for its growth. So this worked out beautifully. Sometimes it's kind of hard to gauge how large it has grown, so I'm gonna stick my, uh, I look bold. <laughs> I look like those Japanese samurai. Can you stand next to the tank so we can see how tall the tree is? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so when I got the mango... <laughs> Pow Pow Fish is a fantastic book, by the way. So when I first got the tree, is about like yay high. And through the year, it just totally sprouted. Fantastic, fantastic. And I'm really hoping that it's gonna fill out this portion. And it's gonna be look... It's gonna look beautiful once it filled out. Is that like a flying by this light? Yeah, so the light is gonna be on at 3 a.m. and shut off around like 11 a.m. And usually that's when I'm... We're doing work there. I'm looking that way anyways. I may add a little curtain in the back. I'm not sure yet. Maybe. <laughs> I was like, what's up with the outfit? Yeah, it's uh, New, New, New Year. Today is like the first day. Yeah, that's my shirt actually. Today is like the first day of New, New, New Year. So, Happy New Year to all of you who celebrate it. Say Gong Fa Chai. Happy New Year. Gong 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 one frequently asked question for this tank is what equipment and what kind of filtration I'm using for this uh, soft coral and macroalgae tank. So really quickly, I'm gonna run through the equipment list. It's gonna be less than one minute and then we'll jump into the actual update. In terms of lighting, I am using the Ecotech Radeon G4 Pro from my 45 gallon tank built. This light is really, really nice and is really overkill for this tank, but I do have this light handy. So I figure, all right, you know what? Let's just go ahead and use this light. Has been lighting this tank fantastically. In terms of water circulation, I also have a Ecotech MP10 10. Again, this is also dialed all the way back down because this pump is pretty powerful. In terms of water circulation, I also have one of these guys. This is the XP Aqua in tank sump. Basically, just kind of like an overflow kit with a little pump at the bottom. And with the little pump, it's hooked up to one of the uh, auto top off system from XP Aqua as well. It's pulling from this uh, five gallon acrylic uh, water holder. At the moment, I am running Kami Pure Blue and those comes in little packages. It's perfect for nano tank. A lot of people really like the Kami Pure series. They got the blue, the elite and stuff like that. But for small tanks, people usually like the uh, Kami Pure Blue. Go Troy. Lao Si Dao Lai. Okay. And lastly, in terms of equipment, uh, I do have a heater here as well. I think that is a 100 watts heater. That's a Phoenix titanium one. I like titanium just so that they won't break. Kind of like, what is going on? <laughs> There's something wrong with her. I don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong with her. Comment down below if you know what's wrong it's with her. New unicorn. Okay, all right, I, I don't, I don't, I can't. Uh. All right guys, so tank updates. Let's talk about the fish first. The foul fish has really plucked into the system perfectly. He is just in his element. So I'm really tempted to just leave this foul fish in this tank long term. But again, I am keeping an eye out to make sure that he is not picking at Zoas like these guys right here. So far it seems okay. It's been in there a couple days already. Uh, so far it seems okay, but at the same time I also feel that this tank may be a little bit small for this file fish long term. This filefish was sold as a Aptasia eating file fish, but I think it's actually the Bristol tail or matted file fish uh, that I actually kept one a long time ago in my 65 gallon tank. And these guys get a little bit larger, not as small as the uh, white spotted or radios file fish. So I think long term this tank may be a little bit small. So again, this is just gonna be a temporary home for this foul fish until we start picking at things or until it gets a little bit large. We'll see which way things goes. But for now, seems to be a model citizen and definitely an interesting addition to this tank. Now in terms of the Bangai Cardinals, it seems like they're kind of restricting themselves to like the shaded part of the tank. So that makes me feel that maybe the light is a little bit too strong for their likings. I mean, it's been 
long time already and you see that they're still kind of chilling the shade so that kind of tells you a little something. Seeing how the soft corals and macroalgae really respond to the brighter lights, I am seriously considering actually moving the band guys to the 145 simply because there's more options in terms of shaded area for them to hang out. So if they hate the light, they're not just kind of confined to here and after the light is out, um, they actually can roam the whole tank. So that's something that I'm kind of playing with, whether to move the uh, the pair of band guys, I don't think they're a pair actually, they're just like different side of the tank, to the 145 and let them just kind of hang out there. And in this tank, we got the file fish for now and then maybe a damn soul chromis, I don't know. There's no point forcing them to stay here when have other options where it's more suitable for the environment. So we'll see. We'll see in terms of the band guys. But a foul fish, that guy is just like right at home among all the Gorgonian and the Xenias. Speaking of Xenia, the Xenia has really taken over the tank, except now the hairy mushroom is kind of coming in to fight them as well. This rock used to be all Xenia. If I swing around to here, see how it's kind of filled with Xenia? Personally, I really like this look. I know for a lot of people, Xenia is invasive corals. They try to avoid Xenia at all costs. But for me, in this tank particularly, I welcome it. This is the type of zinnias, they do not pulse, but the interesting thing about it is that they are also known as blue zinnias. Uh, from certain angle, uh, the water is kind of running right now, I can't really see it, but from certain angle, they are like a velvet blue. It's really, really beautiful and really unique corals. Uh, so I'm really thankful to get a frag of this from Jim and Mari, and it's been doing fantastic. Over here, I got two really cool soft corals that are doing really well. This is a Japanese pink nepheus and another type of nepheus that also has that really interesting texture on the trunk. And I got both of them from Lin. They're doing fantastic. This is a new addition. So these are the crown toadstool, white pilot crown toadstool that used to be really popular back then. I have not seen them as often these days, probably because everybody's going with a high-end coral. These are considered quote unquote more common. But uh, when you get them to a nice large size, it almost looks like a field of white polyp just flowing. It's absolutely beautiful, especially if you have seen my friend Joseph's tank. So he fracked up his toadstool, he gave me two frags, and they're doing fantastic. PSA Rainbow is looking kind of sad right now. I actually moved this from the 145 gallon tank and you can see like I got bubble algae encrusting on this already. Now bubble algae is always kind of like a underlying issue with this tank. Every two weeks when I do water change, I'll pull out all these macro algae and try to get as much of the uh, bubble algae as I could manually by hand. And oftentimes I'll see on these kind of like rock and you'll see like on the uh, trunk of the mangrove, I'll see some bubble algae growth. And whenever I see these, if I can get whatever rock out of the tank to scrub it, I'll do it. If not, I try to use a tweezer to really carefully kind of like pluck them off uh, so they're on a the sand bed. I'll come in with a siphon at the end when I do a water change to kind of siphon them as much out as possible. And of course, I always miss some. So there's always some kind of bubble algae in this tank. I would love to be able to add some ammo crap if I am sure that that ammo crap is gonna eat bubble algae and not just destroy all the mackerel. So I may end up trying one or two ammo crab in this tank at some point. But again, the tricky part is finding ammo crab that actually eats bubble algae. That's the tough part. And you may be kind of curious, like what is that Space Invader doing here? That's actually the uh, Space Invader from 145 gallon tank. During the battle with dinoflagellates, uh, I have some pretty vicious nutrient swings in terms of phosphate and nitrates, and this guy started receding. Uh, you see those little tips with little algae growing? Those are all bare skeleton uh, two weeks ago. It was showing maybe like quarter inch already. It was pretty bad. The night after I put this frag into this tank, the whole core just puffed up, which I have not seen for like at least a month in 135. So there's something in this tank that this guy really likes. Same thing with the Kryptonite Candy Cane. Uh, it was also showing skeleton. I thought it could not be safe, but it has been about a month and a half in this tank. And look, it's bouncing back in a good way. Uh, those guys have always been in this tank and they've always been happy. So this tank, this tank, something about this tank, it's, um, it's dirty but then it's uh, perfect for soft coral and LPS. And every time I talk about this tank, I do have to talk about the letters. A letter is one of those things that's, people either love them or hate them. These days, I feel like there's more people that's loving them. In the past, people just kind of, they were just giving letter away. That's like letter, ah, oh, whatever, it grows so fast and they're not as beautiful as SPS. But these days, I think there's like a resurgence of appreciation of these uh, more common corals, which I'm really happy to see. We got these green tree letters. 
and we got those finger letters. If you ask me if there's certain names to them, there isn't. I mean, they're just really common corals and I really enjoy keeping them because as you can see, if you give them the right flow and right lights, the way they proof up is beautiful. However, uh, initially when I had this guy underneath uh, in the basement, you know, 145 gallon tank, I did not have it directly under the light and it got like pretty weak flow. It looks bad. Uh, the pileup extension is terrible. It's not fluffy, it's not fuzzy. It's just, it just there and then it looks kind of brownish. It's not pretty. But again, look at it with like the right flow and the right lights, it becomes absolutely one of the centerpiece of this tank. Same thing with the green tree ladder. Right now, I feel like the green tree ladder is kind of halfway shedding mucus. That's why it's not really opened. Normally, they're more like this and even poofier. Um, so unfortunately, I did not catch it on a good day, but typically it'll look kind of like that fuzzy and beautiful as well. So there's something to be said about soft coral. However, I feel like it is tougher to get a good photos or video of soft corals because they're so temperamental. It's not like SPS, they're always kind of out. Even though sometimes the polyp may not have like the best extension, but for the most part, the skeleton is there. Same thing with like mushroom and stuff like that. But for leather, a little bit more temperamental. Sometimes I get questions like, oh, my leather is all closed up for like a week, should I be concerned? But that's what leather does. Sometimes it just kind of close up and after a week or two, they kind of shed the mucus, which contains a lot of like the uh, microalgae and stuff like that they're trying to like shrug off. And once that's gone, you see stuff like this, polyp just kind of boom, open back up and it looks beautiful again. So if your leather is looking kind of sad for like a week, let's give it two weeks or so and then make sure to kind of blow off all any detritus that's collecting or make sure it gets decent flow. And then in about two weeks time, it's gonna open up again and it's gonna look beautiful just like that. Soft corals aside, this tank is really built for the macroalgae. And we're starting to see certain macroalgae species just kind of started dominating the landscape. And we got these uh, polyphias, which I hope I'm pronouncing right. My hope for these polyphias is actually growing out in the back to serve as kind of like a background, but it's kind of getting blown down by the water flow. So there goes that dream. And let me kind of just remove this random case so I can show you what it looks like in the back. Uh, they come in nice and thick, but unfortunately they're not standing up straight. They're being blown down by the water current, but it is what it is. And we do have some of these uh, macroalgae that's growing in really well. Let me swing over to the front as well so you guys can see it. So for green algae, we also got the palm tree calibers going. But to be honest, it's just kind of holding steady. It's not really doing too much. I feel like it's being outcompeted by all these other types of macro. So it just kind of, we just got this like two stocks right here and it has been a case of like, okay, grow out, dies off, grow out, dies off. That's pretty much it. This shaving brush is pretty much all I got left for calcified uh, macroalgae. And also this little stock right here. I used to have like mermaid fans and money plans and whatnot, but those are kind of all gone. Um, I think really it just been out competed by the soft corals and these kind of macroalgae. Another really pretty macroalgae that I'm really excited that is doing well is actually the high E, and that's a red one right there. I got another cluster down here. Um, I think I got a small cluster in the back right there as well. Now, with red macroalgae, I was having an issue where they were turning pale, and I had some suggestions on what to try. And at the end, I was able to bring the color back, I think mostly from dosing iron. And this tip is thanks to Miss Mermaid. I was like, oh, you know what? In freshwater plants, I think that could, that's kind of something that plants want too. So we tried it, sure enough, within a week, started coloring back up. So besides iron, this tank, I also dose uh, Chato Grow as well as nitrate. Uh, I do not really test for this tank, so I dose kind of haphazardly because I know the consumption is there. We got the macro algae going, we got soft corals, and of course we got the mangroves. So I know whatever I put in, Chances are, if, if they do not consume it really quickly, eventually they will. And just in case I OD'd, I do have the uh, Chemi Pure Blue in the media chamber as well to kind of soak things up. So it's kind of seems to be working so far. And of course, if I am running like a full blown reef tank, I'd probably do more testing and not dose as haphazardly. But because this is like a macroalgae mangrove tank, uh, I'm a little bit more liberal in terms of like what I dose and I just kind of go for it. One more thing. The reason I'm also running Cami Pure Blue in this tank is because I heard that the Gorgonian can actually get a little bit aggressive in terms of chemical warfare. Uh, initially, I added the uh, chemi pure blue for the leather because I know leather release things into the water if they start getting into like chemical warfare. And then later on, I hear that Gorgonian does the same thing. So I was like, okay, you know what guys, 
Let's make sure there's nothing funky going on with the water and I drop a Kemi uh, Pure Blue. For the last two months, this tank has been doing fantastic. Um, I cannot really attribute it to adding Kemi Pure Blue, but I feel like having that kind of chemical filtration in there definitely helps as well. So in my case, if you ask me if there are certain media that I recommend uh, using in a nano tank, I think uh, my answer is probably Kemi Pure Blue. Uh, you don't absolutely need it, especially if you do a uh, larger water change every week or two, which you should for a small tank. But uh, if you want to kind of polish the water or just to make sure nothing funky is going on, I think Kemi Pure Blue would be something that I'll recommend adding to your tank. So this is like a 2021 update on the mango tank on how it looks right now. It has been a joy and pretty painless compared to the 145 gallon tank. But then again, I'm keeping like macro algae mangrove and really easy to keep soft corals. Uh, even though they're easy to keep stuff, they are still beautiful in their own rights for sure. If you're just starting out in this hobby, you're not that set on keeping like SPS corals and you're totally fine with like soft corals, LPS and macro algae or just stuff that you won't lose sleep over. Um, I think a tank like this maybe something worth thinking about just easy to keep stuff that looks nice get your feet in the door to see if uh this hobby's for you and if so um if you want to step up it's pretty easy to do it from a setup like this if you're celebrating lunar new year i hope that you have a fantastic lunar new year with your family and friends and i'll see you next sunday at 12 13 p.m sharp see ya <laughs>